The Hague is the second most visited city in the Netherlands after Amsterdam because it's a city with many attractions and a large pedestrian zone where you can wander about in old historic lanes. Although Amsterdam is the nation's capital, almost all of the government is headquartered here with the parliament and the prime minister and perhaps most famous as home of the International Court of Justice, a branch of the United Nations. This video is a practical guide for you showing exactly where are the main sites and where you should be walking to catch all of the highlights in your visit. You might think of The Hague as uh, perhaps a modern city, as a government city, and therefore maybe not so interesting to visit but you'll find that it's fascinating. The Hague has got a rich collection of historic buildings, some of them dating back as much as to the 13th century, amazingly, and they've been restored and renovated and kept up to date. The government is located in this complex of very old buildings in the heart of town, and yet there's also a modern side to the city, a modern shopping mall, ultra-modern skyscrapers, and that wonderful pedestrian zone. So altogether, you'll find The Hague has got a lovely variety of kinds of neighborhoods and attractions, historic sites, shopping areas, museums, and just friendly people everywhere, and everywhere bicycles. The two closest main cities are Delft and Leiden, both of which make a good home base for visiting The Hague on a day trip, only 15 minutes away by train. Starting our adventure with arrival at the train station. I arrived at Holland's Spoor, the older station, and it gets a little busy in the morning. It's 9 a.m. morning rush hour, but no problem getting out of the station and then walking towards downtown. Or you could catch a tram at the station that would bring you directly downtown. Perhaps you'd like to rent a bicycle and go the Dutch way, easily available here in the station area. There are two train stations here, Holland's Spoor and Central, and both of them are about the same distance from the crossroads of downtown, about a kilometer or a 15-minute walk. I arrived by train from Leiden, visiting The Hague as a day trip, and got off at Holland's Spoor. The same train continues to Central Station, but I thought I'd start out at Spoor's and walk into downtown. I'll show you the routes in a moment. It's possible to see the main sites in one day, as we will show you in the video. We're suggesting a meandering zigzag route that will take you through most of the pedestrian lanes. Starting out, walking from the train station through Chinatown, up through some pedestrian lanes, through the historic Centrum District with many shops and restaurants, the Royal Palace, back down through other pedestrian lanes. This is really the heart of the shopping and pedestrian center of town. Then walking back north a few blocks to the Royal Gardens and a lovely canal, and then heading over to a popular tree-lined park and yet another upscale shopping street. Have a look at the beautiful Hofiver Pond, the famous Binnenhof Inner Court, with some Gothic structures and the Parliament, some more shopping streets, the modern City Hall and Tourist Information Office, passing ultra-modern skyscrapers, and then back to the train station to depart. It looks like a complicated walk, but the inner center of town is quite small and easy to do, as we will show you. We cross a beautiful canal heading on our walk from Spoor Station into Chinatown. This is an exotic part of The Hague, a great place to get some Indonesian food as well as Chinese and even vegetarian foods. Getting off at Spoor Station is not always recommended, but it has the advantages of seeing that canal and entering into a different part of town, Chinatown, a surprising touch of the east. You could veer over to Tourist Information a couple of minutes away where you can pick up free brochures and get some advice. The Tourist Information Office is in a building right adjacent to the new City Hall and here you'll find a lot of helpful information. You can get maps, you can get hotel reservations, 
suggestions for restaurants and destinations to visit in the city. They also have a cafe and a store where you can purchase guidebooks and maps. In front of their office, you'll be at the widest of all pedestrian streets, Rote Markstadt. This street is where all of the big shopping action takes place. We'll see a lot more of that later on. For now, we're plunging further north into the pedestrian zone. I was here on a very special day, Prince's Dock, when the king delivers to Parliament the budget and plans for the year. It's a festive day with a lot of things happening on the streets, including a big parade that I had saved for a separate movie. It made town all that much livelier. We're walking on a block called Venestrat, which is part of a much longer pedestrian lane that goes through the center of town. It's the most extensive pedestrian lane in the city, and we shall walk its entire length, which began back at that train station. As usual with these old European cities, the only way to see the central area is by walking. It's full of people, no! <laughs> including some colorful characters, shops, buildings, places to eat and drink. It's a never-ending spectacle of entertainment as you stroll along. And plus, it's healthy to be out there walking. Although with all of these tempting shop windows, it could be a little damaging to your budget. But sometimes you get lucky and are given some free stuff, like these french fries, one of the great finger foods of the Netherlands, complete with a choice of sauces. These fritz have an artistic flourish, and you can see that the giveaway is a good plan. The place was packed. It was the first of this french fry chain to open. It was in 2016, and since then they've opened up in five other cities. Our lane arrives at the old Green Market Square, a very popular plaza that many consider to be the center of town. In the old days, this is where everybody came to buy their vegetables and their fish. And it's the location of the old city hall that was first built 1565. Around the corner, you'll reach the great church with its steeple 93 meters high, one of the oldest buildings in town, constructed in stages between the 14th and 16th centuries. Protestant, it's also called St. James's Church, with a lively plaza around it and more shopping streets. You can see what a popular gathering place this is, and always with the bicycles going by, like this cart with the well-dressed little kids. This Green Market Plaza is quite the busy crossroads with eight different streets coming together here. We continue walking north along that same basic lane now called Hoogstraat, part of what's known as the Palais Promenade because it leads up to the Royal Palace. We'll get there in a few minutes. It seems that the shops get a little bit more upscale the further north we go. It's quite easy to walk from one end of the historic center to the other as we're doing here because it's just about 1.5 kilometers in distance. We're here on that national holiday, the Princess Dock, when some people show off their big orange hats. I came back the next day on a non-holiday, and here's how the Platz looks. It's a busy plaza, but on this holiday, it was really jam-packed. We'll show you a little bit more of that holiday festivities in a separate movie all about the Royal Parade. The triangular-shaped Platz is one of the oldest and most popular plazas in town. As you see, it's loaded with eateries. There's lots of restaurants, bars, and cafes all around the square, and a big range of prices from the most expensive right down to Subway sandwiches. The statue commemorates Johan de Witt, who was leader of the Netherlands during the golden era of the late 17th century, but he was blamed for the French conquest of Holland, and an angry mob turned on him and murdered him. Now we're looking at the Hofiver Pond and Binnenhof Palace on the right side, location of the national government. And you'll find lots of scenic beauty here, right in the middle of the city. It's the palace, the museums, the parliament, the beautiful pond and the flowers. We'll show you more views of the fish pond and take you inside the palace courtyard in a little while, but for now we are continuing our walk north along that lovely pedestrian lane. We came upon a horse-drawn carriage containing a calliope. 
that old-fashioned musical instrument, sometimes played with a keyboard, but here it's performing automatically somehow, with the owners out front looking for a little charity. Here that same street changes names once again, and it's called Norteinda. We've entered the neighborhood known as the Hofquartier, that's neighborhood of the royal court with the palace just ahead and beautiful streets lined with elegant fashion boutiques, art galleries, antique shops, and many more cafes. Notice the street sign pointing with directions and distances to the various destinations. Really helps you get around. More of those orange hats celebrating. It's the national color, in part because the nation was founded by the House of Orange. A statue of William of Orange stands in front of the royal palace. The building is not a royal residence, but is used as offices for the king. Looking further north along that same elegant shopping lane of Nordeinda, noted for the town's largest art gallery concentration, we'll have a quick peek at it, go a few blocks up and then turn around. Although if you have time and interest in the arts, you could spend half an afternoon up here. But we are continuing the walk in our zigzag journey through the heart of town. Once again, the signs point our direction. Don't worry about all those choices, just follow my route. The map shows where we have already been and where we're heading next, down another pedestrian lane and then back up through another shopping lane to the Royal Gardens. Walking along now the Oda Molstrat, you'll notice there are three of these parallel pedestrian lanes and you want to catch them all, which is why we are zigzagging up and down. And for a bonus, there are little side lanes you want to explore. If you have lots of time here, you might want to just trip around in that aimless wander. But if you're a little bit limited and want to see everything, it pays to stick to that zigzag schedule so that you cover all the streets without forgetting something. Ask a local a question and you might be brought into an interesting conversation that will tell you a lot about the place. Okay, welcome in The Hague. This is the oldest street of The Hague uh, because it started here, the city, on the highest level of the city. Uh, we have here the Hof Quartier. Hof is the, means the, the palace. Oh. So it's the surrounding around so the palace. That's this neighborhood here. Yeah, Hof Quartier, that's the district. Uh -huh. And the Hague also has the name of uh, City of uh, Peace mm -hmm. because the mm -hmm. international court is here. That means people love it because they come from Paris a lot, from America, from Asia. They come for the Maurits House, for the art, for the Rembrandt. Uh -huh. So yeah, there is a lot of history. The king is living here, the prime minister, the embassies are here. Uh -huh. It's all uh, in the Hague, a lot of hotels, a lot of conferences here in the Hague. His name in English would be Bill Brown and turns out he's sitting in front of a tea shop that's operated by his two daughters with a special kind of green tea called matcha. His daughter Claire explained the benefits of this tea and how it's made. Green tea powder. Mm -hmm. And you don't brew it like the other teas, you do it in a special way. Then you make first a paste to make it uh, very smooth and you whisk it for 20 seconds in this way. Mm -hmm. And then you have the matcha tea shot and you can drink it immediately. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's refreshing and healthy. Yeah, it's a real superfood from Japan and it's uh, rich in antioxidants. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people drink it because it's healthy and mm -hmm. it gives you an energy boost. Ah. And Thayin is working for six to eight hours slowly. So when you start your day with a matcha in the morning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, with your breakfast, then you feel yeah, ener energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look for their shop, Hug the Tea, on Facebook and the web. You're going to find that the Dutch are the friendliest people you've ever met. They are so warm and open and ready to talk. When you strike up a conversation, you'll realize how enjoyable and educational it can be. All you have to do is break the ice and say hello. Another couple of blocks down Odemolenstraat and we turn around and head north again going up Prinsestraat. It's the third one of these lanes we've been focusing on in the central part of the city and there's a few cars but wide sidewalks, a friendly pedestrian atmosphere, more elegant shop 
and it leads up to the Palace Garden, one of The Hague's most enjoyable shopping streets with a variety of excellent restaurants, unique boutiques and specialty shops. We arrive at Palace Gardens behind the Royal Palace. Now, here's an example of The Hague being quite different than most other Dutch cities. Here, there are some large green parks in the central part of the city. Unlike other Dutch towns that were surrounded by moats and medieval walls with a rather dense interior population, The Hague has got more parklands than any other main city in the Netherlands. It's called the Palace Gardens, but it's free and open to the public. Facing the gardens is the canal called Northwest Singlesgrot. It's one of the only canals in The Hague. Another way that this city is different from many of the other cities of the Netherlands, here they do not have many canals in the center of town, but there is a peripheral canal around the town. This section appears to be the nicest of their canal scenes. They've got restaurants on barges right on the water. Some benches along the canal give a nice viewpoint to relax and enjoy the scene. And now we are going to head over to another part of town through a park and up to yet another beautiful street, Denemon. It's a delightful stroll back through the town into this lovely garden area with tall trees and they were setting up for a food festival. We're in the park of Lange Vorhout. These kind of food events happen on a regular basis. Sometimes you've got to get lucky and stumble into them. Other times you can look on websites of the city and see when are the food festivals happening. But it happens pretty much on a regular basis. So you'll probably get lucky and get some street food out of these trucks. In my case, I was a little early. They were just setting up and not ready to sell any food yet. So maybe come back later. Another reason for having a couple of days to visit any place. If budget is no problem, you might enjoy Hotel Days Indies, a five-star deluxe property. And now we're taking a stroll along Danabag. This is one of the nicest streets of town. It's got the usual collection of clothing stores, art galleries, cafes, restaurants, places to hang out, window shop, and just spend some quality time. It's one of those streets with limited automobile access, so it's mostly for pedestrians and bicycles and strolling along and just enjoying the leisurely atmosphere of Denebeg. It's one of the oldest streets in town where you can experience the rich history of the past. And yet now it's a classic busy shopping street with a number of impressive storefronts. There's antiques. There are shop windows that show exceptional pieces of furniture, paintings, and decorative objects. Here too, you've got several side lanes that lead off for a block or two with more galleries and bookshops and things to discover. Back around the corner, we find the smallest house in The Hague. It's a tiny little place, probably very expensive today. We're back at Long of Orhout with a row of patrician mansions, one of which is now the Escher Museum. M.C. Escher was a Dutch artist who was a genius at drawing impossible situations, masterpieces of optical illusion. He lived from 1898 to 1972. His work features convoluted, twisted subjects with infinities, reflections, symmetries, perspectives, levels of reality that are beyond belief, creating visual puzzles that cannot be solved. Escher Museum fronts on the Hofiver or fish pond it's a lake bordered with trees and with an island planted with rhododendrons where swans and other water birds swim on that glassy surface. There is a lovely lakefront promenade that goes all the way around this pond, worth taking a look at. That leads us into the most important site in the entire city, the Binnenhof, the old court palace, which is now the location of the parliament and various important government offices. There are several very impressive gateways that lead into the Binnenhof courtyard. And in the old days, back in the medieval era, 
it would have been surrounded by a moat as well to protect it from any sort of outside attack. The Netherlands has a bicameral legislature that meets here in the Binnenhof, and it consists of the Senate and the House of Representatives, very similar to the United States. In fact, this goes back to the 15th century, and it had been a model for the founding fathers in America in creating the U.S. government. An aerial view from Google Earth shows the overall structure of the palace courtyard with historic brick buildings all around it now used as government offices. Seen from the other side, we get a view in the foreground of a plaza called the Plein, one of the main gathering spots of town. This Hall of the Knights is the oldest structure dating back to the Middle Ages. It looks like a church, but it's actually a government building with a great hall for major speeches. A brick building with lofty gables and two towers, first built in the year 1249. A gold neo-Gothic fountain adorns the main square. The name Binnenhof is given both to the group of buildings that form the palace and to the courtyards in which they stand. Courts of justice are here as well as archives of the kingdom. Exiting the courtyard through an arch on the west end brings you to another one of the main plazas of town, the Beitenhof, with more restaurants and lovely buildings around it. Remembering the role of The Hague as the International Court of Justice, this location is one of the places where demonstrations often happen looking for justice. And we ran into a group of Biafrans from Nigeria looking to plead their case. There was a civil war in 1967 in which the Biafrans declared independence but were crushed by the Nigerians. They've been protesting ever since. We are here to, to tell the world what is happening in, uh, in Nigeria. And uh, Biafra, after the war, the 1967 war, uh, a lot of us, they killed a lot of Biafrans. And from that moment till now, we are still suffering. People are dying of hunger. Biafrans are a large minority of 60 million people in Nigeria, and their land contains a lot of oil resources that the Nigerian central government has been taking without compensating the people of Biafra, who have been living in poverty and are seeking justice. <laughs> They are one of the world's countless groups who have been oppressed for decades or sometimes centuries and have been forgotten by the mainstream, but they come to The Hague seeking justice. By contrast, we re-enter the Western modern world in the era of consumerism and shopping malls in a passage that dates back to the late 19th century. It's the only one in the Netherlands that still has this original kind of design. A style of enclosed shopping mall that was pioneered in Paris back in the mid-19th century. It was built so that retailers could now stock the luxury goods that previously had only been ordered privately from Paris that were sent in by mail to the Netherlands. Something like Amazon Prime versus our modern shopping malls. And now Apple has a prime spot in this Victorian era shopping passage. The world's biggest and yes, most popular company has to be here to take care of their customers, along with dozens of shops and a great variety of everything you could possibly need. They have extended the original passage another couple of blocks in a modern style in a lovely homage to the concept of this covered shopping mall. It just keeps going and going, of course, mostly for clothing shops, mostly for ladies, and a little variety of this and that for everybody else. Then we get back to the big shopping street, the Grote Mokstraat. This is where we started much earlier in the program, coming up through Chinatown, and promised we would take you back here, and there it is. Another great street for strolling with the Novotel offering a choice central accommodation. At the end of the pedestrian mall, you reach another of the main plazas of town, the Rotomat, as seen from above, thanks to Google Earth. 
there is a very convenient underground entrance to the tram that travels by subway back to the central train station for getting out of town. That is one option, or you could walk back to the central station as we're gonna show you next. Let's back up for a moment, and instead of taking that tram, let's just walk to the train station on the city street. It takes just 10 minutes, and we can visit the brand new city hall along the way. We are now entering a much different part of The Hague. It is very modern. The amazing city hall is at the other end of that wide pedestrian mall. You will see this is one remarkable structure, quite different than the old brick historic buildings that we've been enjoying so far in The Hague. The city hall of The Hague is an ultra modern building designed by American architect Richard Meyer and it is astonishing. They say it has the largest indoor atrium in all of Europe. It's about 12 stories high and a completely enclosed space. And it's also a very functional space because it's a large building that houses the city hall, the government offices. And they do a lot of client services right there on the ground floor, taking care of their public. It was designed in 1986 and completed in 1995. This amazing building is open to the public and it's just behind the tourist information office, so please take a look inside. It's located in the new city center and incorporates the council chamber, the main public library, as well as cafes and exhibition spaces. And there's also a public toilet inside. It's nicknamed the Ice Palace because of its white color. It's quite a contrast to the old brick buildings of The Hague and reminds you that this city is up to speed with the modern age. From here, it's only half a kilometer walk to the central train station, and it will take you along some urban streets that are worth seeing. You'll pass interesting ultra-modern skyscraper buildings along the way, or you could take a tram, but it's better to walk. It just takes about 10 minutes. This is the new skyscraper city of The Hague. Most of these buildings are government ministry offices for various departments. Some of them are apartments. Fortunately, it's set apart from the historic center, which remains nicely preserved. Thanks again to Google Earth, we can have an overview from up above looking at the train station on the right side with the Binnenhof and downtown in the background and then spinning around showing all of these new skyscrapers. It's quite interesting to walk past them at ground level, looking up. Such a contrast with the old town. Crossing a relatively hidden canal, we enter into the amazing modern structure of Central Station. This has been under construction for decades and only recently has been completed. As you see today, it is a remarkable structure. The ceiling is made of glass panels that let in a lot of light. The walls also have a lot of glass, allowing the light to stream in. With so much retail activity, it's become a major shopping mall with restaurants and clothing stores and all kinds of conveniences. And yes, many trains come through in this highly functional arrangement. Like so many train stations in Europe, they also have a piano available for anybody to sit down and play. Most entertaining. The Dutch rail system is one of the world's best. The trains are frequent, clean, reliable, and the distances are short because the cities are really not far apart. Maybe 15 to 20 minutes and you'll be in Delft or Leiden, or in an hour you can travel to Amsterdam all of which makes it very easy to visit The Hague, either as a day trip or better yet, spend a couple of nights to see all of the many sites that we've been presenting. It is one of the great cities. We've got many more movies about the Netherlands. Look for them in our collection. We upload a new travel movie every week, so if you want to be informed, please subscribe and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up? And we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.